Hi everyone, welcome to Gold Price. Let me start off by saying that the RTX 2080 from NVIDIA is still the stronger GPU compared to AMD's Radeon RX 5700 XT. So what I'm sharing today is how an RTX 2080 can be outperformed by the RX 5700 XT. To say outperform is actually inaccurate. What happens is that the RTX 2080 GPU, if paired with a weaker processor, which is CPU, can cause it to underperform. And that is where the RX 5700 XT, of which paired with a reasonably powerful processor, can actually outperform the RTX 2080. There is, however, a misconception that only the GPU matters. Well, actually, the CPU matters too. It's good to strike a balance, though on some titles, the CPU doesn't matter that much. And even when you go on a high resolution, the CPU matters less. But nevertheless, getting a balanced setup is good. And that's why I'm looking forward to show you guys the benchmarks of the upcoming Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X, of which I think can do a pretty good job in gaming. Do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't and click the notification so you know when my review comes. As I go through the 10 benchmarks afterwards, I'll be highlighting about monitors because the monitor will ultimately decide your experience. A 60Hz refresh rate monitor can only show you 60 frames per second because it only refreshes 60 times per second. Therefore, whether you have 80 or 100 frames per second, it does not matter. And I'm testing it on 1080p. So if you are gaming on 1440p, know that the higher resolution you go, the less the CPU matters. And in my benchmark, I do not have the RTX 2080 paired with my Ryzen 5 3500X because the RTX 2080 is no longer with me. All right, without further ado, let's dive into the benchmarks. In shadow of the Tomb Raider, you will see that the RX 5700 XT on a third generation Ryzen outperforms the RTX 2080 on the second generation Ryzen. The second generation Ryzen even holds back the performance of the 5700 XT, while the Ryzen 7 3700X paired with the RTX 2080 performs the best. If you are using a 60Hz refresh rate monitor, this does not matter because all of them perform very well and you wouldn't note the difference at all. If you are on a 144Hz refresh rate monitor, then all of them don't make the cut except for the Ryzen 7 3700X with the RTX 2080 being somewhat acceptable. Moving on to Far Cry 5, it is of the same pattern. The RTX 2080 is again underperforming when paired with a second generation Ryzen. However, looking at the benchmarks, if you are on a 60Hz refresh rate monitor, this does not matter at all because all of them are plenty fast. And again, if you're on a 144Hz refresh rate monitor, then only the Ryzen 7 3700X paired with the RTX 2080 makes the cut in a somewhat acceptable manner. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you will see that the pattern remains the same. However, note that the second generation Ryzen holds back the RX 5700 XT quite a lot. If you're on a 60Hz refresh rate monitor, then most of them will work fine except for the 2600 with the 5700 XT. Up next, we have the Division 2, of which you see the chart is now different. Both the RX 5700 XT setup are behind the RTX 2080 setup. And if you're on a 60Hz refresh rate monitor, then again, it does not matter because all of them are really fast. And then we have Metro Exodus, of which the game is so demanding in the extreme settings, all of the settings will perform similarly. And this is when I want to highlight the cost. The Ryzen 5 2600 costs less than the Ryzen 5 3500X. Even if you are intending to pair it with the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, which many of you say is the 2600, it's cheap. But even so, once you factor in the graphics card, the most expensive RX 5700 XT is still far less in terms of cost compared to the RTX 2080 or even the RTX 2070 Super. So in the end, by having the 
imbalance pairing, you are paying more for same or lesser performance. Now let's move on to the second set of benchmarks of which I am comparing the Ryzen 5 2600 that represents the second generation Ryzen processor against the Ryzen 5 3500X which is the third generation Ryzen but it's not as strong as the bigger brothers 3600 and up. In World War Z, you will see that the Ryzen 5 3500X outperforms the Ryzen 5 2600 by far. If you are playing at 60Hz refresh rate monitor, this is a non-issue. If you are playing at 144Hz refresh rate monitor, then I say both will perform very well with a slight setback on the second generation Ryzen setup. In Red Dead Redemption 2, again, the performance is actually similar with the second generation, so a lower 1% low. But if you're on a 60Hz refresh rate monitor, then again, this is non-issue because it will still perform well enough. This is the same with Ghost Recon Breakpoint. The second generation Ryzen setup is not as fast as a third generation Ryzen setup. However, if you are on a 60Hz refresh rate monitor, then again, both frame rates are well beyond that and your experience should be similar. Moving on to Dota 2, you will see that the third generation Ryzen setup outperforms the second generation Ryzen setup by far. If you are on a 60Hz refresh rate monitor, then it makes no difference. But if you're on a 144Hz refresh rate monitor, then only the third generation Ryzen setup makes the cut. Lastly, we have CSGO, of which you will see that the third generation outperforms the second generation by a super huge margin. However, it makes no difference even if you're on a 240Hz refresh rate monitor because both frame rates are blazing fast. All in all, with the benchmarks I've shown you, I hope you understand that CPU matters. Though some games it has no effect at all, some games there's uh, quite a gap in the frame rate, but once you factor in the frame rate against the monitor refresh rate, you pretty much can decide whether you should upgrade your CPU. After all, it's depending on your monitor and your expectations. And then there's the RAM timings, that one can affect the frame rates too. You can check out my other benchmarks, link up above. But I will not go into that. The difference to me is of often negligible. But if you can afford a good RAM kit and you can afford the time and effort to tune it, go with it because you will get the best out of your system. But some of you say, your Ryzen 5 3600X has not seen 100% CPU load. It shouldn't be a bottleneck. Well, that's the thing. You don't have to be 100% load to CPU bottleneck. That is a hardware type of bottleneck. In this case, games are often develop in such a way that it can use a lot of threads. So these threads are already assigned the task and now it's the matter of waiting for the task to get done. So this is where the clock speeds and the instructions per cycle matters. These things will in the end affect the performance. It doesn't have to reach a 100% CPU load to face a bottleneck. With all that said and done, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.